Chapter 3. Ineluctable modality of the visible, at least that if no more, thought through my eyes. Signatures of all things I am here to read, sea spawn and sea rack, the nearing tide, that rusty boot. Snot green, blue silver, rust, colored signs. Limits of the diaphany. But he adds, in bodies. Then he was aware of them bodies before of them colored. How? By knocking his sconce against them, sure. Go easy. Bald he was and a millionaire, maestro di color che sano limit of the diaphany in. Why in? Diaphany, a diaphany. If you can put your five fingers through it it is a gate, if not a door. Shut your eyes and see. Stephen closed his eyes to hear his boots crush crackling rack and shells. You are walking through it house ever. I am, a stride at a time. A very short space of time through very short times of space. Five, six, the nationander exactly, and that is the ineluctable modality of the audible. Open your eyes. No. Jesus. If I fell over a cliff that beetles or his base, fell through the Nebanian ander ineluctably. I am getting on nicely in the dark. My ash sword hangs at my side. Tap with it, they do. My two feet in his boots are at the ends of his legs, Nebanian ander sounds solid, made by the mallet of lost demiurgus am I walking into eternity along Sandy Mount Strand? Crush, crack, crick, crick. Wild sea money. Domini DC kens them ah. Uh. Won't you come to Sandy Mount, Madeline the mare? Rhythm begins, you see. I hear. A catalectic tetrameter of iams marching. No, a gallop, Delini the mare open your eyes now. I will. One moment. Has all vanished since? If I open an am forever in the black a diaphany. Basta. I will see if I can see. See now. They're all the time without you, and ever shall be, world without end. They came down the steps from Lee's terrace prudently, Frau and Simmer, and down the shelving shore flabbily, their splayed feet sinking in the silted sand. Like me, like algae, coming down to our mighty mother. Number one swung lurdily her midwife's bag, the others gamp poked in the beach. From the liberties, out for the day. Mrs. Florence McCabe, relict of the late Pock McCabe, deeply lamented, of Bride Street. One of her sisterhood lugged me squealing into life. Creation from nothing. What has she in the bag? A misbirth with a trailing navel cord, hushed in ruddy wool. The cords of all link back, strand and twining cable of all flesh. That is why mystic monks. Will you be as gods? Gaze in your omphalos hello. Kinch here. Put me on to Edenville. Aleph, Alpha, Nought, Nought, One. Spouse and helpmate of Adam Codman, Heva, Naked Eve. She had no navel. Gaze. Belly without blemish, bulging big, a buckler of taut vellum, no, white heaped corn, orient and immortal, standing from everlasting to everlasting. Womb of sin. Wombed in sin darkness I was too, made not begotten. By them, the man with my voice and my eyes and a ghost woman with ashes on her breath. They clasped and sundered, did the coupler's will. From before the ages he willed me and now may not will me away or ever. Alexi Turna stays about him. Is that then the divine substance wherein father and son are consubstantial? Where is poor dear Arius to try conclusions? Warring his life long upon the contrans magnificent Jubang Tantiality. Ill starred heresiarch. In a Greek water closet he breathed his last, euthanasia with beaded mitre and with crozier, stalled upon his throne, widower of a widowed sea, with upstiffed omophorion, with clotted hinder parts. Airs romped round him, nipping in eager airs. They are coming waves. The white men's seahorses, champing, bright wind bridled, the steeds of Mananan. I mustn't forget his letter for the press. And after? The ship, half twelve. By the way go easy with that money like a good young imbecile. Yes, I must. His pace slackened. Here. Am I going to Aunt Sarah's or not? My consubstantial father's voice. Did you see anything of your artist brother Stephen lately? No? Sure he's not down in Strasbourg Terrace with his Aunt Sally? Couldn't he fly a bit higher than that, eh? And 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 tell us, Stephen, how is Uncle C? Oh, weeping God, the things I married into. Du Bois up into Hayloft. The drunken little cost drawer and his brother, the cornet player. Highly respectable gondoliers. And skew-eyed Walter Suring his father, no less. Sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Jesus wept, and no wonder, by Christ. I pull the wheezy bell of their shuttered cottage, and wait. They take me for a dun, peer out from a coin of vantage. It's Stephen, sir. Let him in. 
Let Stephen in. A bolt drawn back and Walter welcomes me. We thought you were someone else. In his broad bed Uncle Richie, pillowed and blanketed, extends over the hillock of his knees a sturdy forearm. Clean-chested. He has washed the upper moiety. Moro, nephew. He lays aside the lapboard whereon he drafts his bills of costs for the eyes of Master Goff and Master Chaplain Tandy, filing consents and common searches and a writ of Duce's Tecuma Bagok frame over his bald head, Wilde's requiescat the drone of his misleading whistle brings Walter back. Yes, sir? Malt for Richie and Stephen, tell mother. Where is she? Bathing Chrissy, sir. Papa's little bed pal. Lump of love. No, Uncle Richie. Call me Richie. Damn your lithia water. It lowers. Whiskey. Uncle Richie, really? Sit down or by the law Harry I'll knock you down. Walter squints vainly for a chair. He has nothing to sit down on, sir. He has nowhere to put it, you mug. Bring in our Chippendale chair. Would you like a bite of something? None of your damned law dida airs here. The rich of a rasher fried with a herring? Sure? So much the better. We have nothing in the house but backache pills. Alerta. He drones bars of Ferrando's aria di sortita the grandest number, Stephen, in the whole opera. Listen. His tuneful whistle sounds again, finely shaded, with rushes of the air, his fists big drumming on his padded knees. This wind is sweeter. Houses of decay, mine, his and all. You told the Klongos gentry you had an uncle a judge and an uncle a general in the army. Come out of them, Stephen. Beauty is not there nor in the stagnant Bay of Marsh's library where you read the fading prophecies of Joachim Abbas. For whom? The hundred-headed rabble of the cathedral close. A hater of his kind ran from them to the wood of madness, his mane foaming in the moon, his eyeballs stars. Huinum, horse nostrilled. The oval equine faces, Temple, Buck Mulligan, Foxy Campbell, Lantern Jaws. Abbas father, furious Dean, what offense laid fire to their brains? Poff. Descend, Cav. Utni nimium decalvaris a garland of grey hair on his comminated head see him me clambering down to the foot pace, descend, clutching a monstrance, basiliskeed. Get down, bald pole. A choir gives back menace and echo, assisting about the altar's horns, the snorted Latin of jack priests moving burly in their albs, tonsured and oiled and gelded, fat with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And at the same instant perhaps a priest round the corner is elevating it. Dring dring. And two streets off another locking it into a pix. Dring a dring. And in a lady chapel another taking housel all to his own cheek. Dring dring. Down, up, forward, back. Dan Ockham thought of that, invincible doctor. A misty English morning the imp hypostasis tickled his brain. Bringing his host down and kneeling he heard twine with his second bell the first bell in the transept, he is lifting his, and, rising, heard, now I am lifting, there two bells, he is kneeling, twang in diphthong. Cousin Stephen, you will never be a saint. Olive saints. You were awfully holy, weren't you? You prayed to the blessed virgin that you might not have a red nose. You prayed to the devil in Serpentine Avenue that the foobsy widow in front might lift her clothes still more from the wet street. Oh see, Certo. Sell your soul for that, do, dyed rags pinned round a squaw. More tell me, more still. On the top of the hoth tram alone crying to the rain, naked women. Naked women. What about that, eh? What about what? What else were they invented for? Reading two pages apiece of seven books every night, eh? I was young. You bowed to yourself in the mirror, stepping forward to applause earnestly, striking face. Hooray for the goddamned idiot. Ray. No one saw, tell no one. Books you were going to write with letters for titles. Have you read his F? Oh yes, but I prefer Q yes, but W is wonderful. Oh yes, W remember your epiphanies written on green oval leaves, deeply deep, copies to be sent if you died to all the great libraries of the world, including Alexandria? Someone was to read them there after a few thousand years, a Mahaman Vantara. Pico della Mirandola like. A, very like a whale. When one reads these strange pages of one long gone one feels that one is at one with one who wants. The grainy sand had gone from under his feet. His boots trod again a damp crackling mast, razor shells, squeaking pebbles, that on the unnumbered pebbles beats, would sieved by the shipworm, lost armada. Unwholesome sandflats waited to suck his treading soles, breathing upward sewage breath, a pocket of seaweed smoldered in sea fire under a midden of man's ashes. He coasted them, walking warily. A porter bottle stood up, stogged to its waist, in the cakey sand dough. 
A sentinel, olive dreadful thirst. Broken hoops on the shore, at the land a maze of dark cunning nets, farther away chalk scrawled back doors and on the higher beach a drying line with two crucified shirts. Ringsend, wigwams of brown steersmen and master mariners. Human shells. He halted. I have passed the way to Aunt Sarah's. Am I not going there? Seems not. No one about. He turned northeast and crossed the firmer sand towards the pigeon house. Qui vous a mis don set fichway position? C'est le pigeon, Joseph. Patrice, home on furlough, lapped warm milk with me in the bar McMahon. Son of the wild goose, Kevin Egan of Paris. My father's a bird, he lapped the sweet lay show with pink young tongue, plump bunny's face. Lap, lappin. He hopes to win in the gross lots about the nature of women he read in Michelet but he must send me la vie de Jésus by M. Leo Taxiel. Lend it to his friend. Say tordant, vous savez. Moi, je suis socialiste. Je ne crois pas en l'existence de Dieu. Faux pas la dire à mon père. Il croit? Mon père, oui. Schluss he laps. My Latin quarter hat. God, we simply must dress the character. I want puce gloves. You were a student, weren't you? Of what in the other devil's name? Pace I N. P. C. N. You know, physiques, she me kept not arel ha. Eating your groats worth of moen civet, flesh pots of Egypt, elbowed by belching cabmen. Just say in the most natural tone, when I was in Paris, bowl Mitch, I used to. Yes, used to carry punch tickets to prove an alibi if they arrested you for murder somewhere. Justice. On the night of the 17th of February 1904 the prisoner was seen by two witnesses. Other fellow did it, other me. Hat, tie, overcoat, nose. Louis, say moi you seem to have enjoyed yourself. Proudly walking. Whom were you trying to walk like? Forget, a dispossessed. With mother's money order, eight shillings, the banging door of the post office slammed in your face by the usher. Hunger toothache. Encore due minutes look clock. Must get. For May hired dog. Shoot him to bloody bits with a bang shotgun. Bits man spattered walls all brass buttons. Bits all quirk lock in place clack back. Not hurt? Oh, that's all right. Shake hands. See what I meant, see? Oh, that's all right. Shake a shake. Oh, that's all only all right. You were going to do wonders, what? Missionary to Europe after fiery Columbanus. Fiacra and Scotus on their creepy stools in heaven spilt from their pint pots, loud Latin laughing. Huge. Huge. Pretending to speak broken English as you dragged your valise, porter threepence, across the slimy pier at New Haven. Comment? Rich booty you brought back, la tutu, five tattered numbers of pantalone blanc et culotte rouge, a blue French telegram, curiosity to show, mother dying come home father. The aunt thinks you killed your mother. That's why she won't. Then here's a health to Mulligan's aunt and I'll tell you the reason why. She always kept things decent in the Hannigan family. His feet marched in sudden proud rhythm over the sand furrows, along by the boulders of the south wall. He stared at them proudly, piled stone mammoth skulls. Gold light on sea, on sand, on boulders. The sun is there, the slender trees, the lemon houses. Paris Raleigh waking, crude sunlight on her lemon streets. Moist pith of farls of bread, the frog green wormwood, her matin incense, court the air. Bella Omo rises from the bed of his wife's lover's wife, the kerchiefed housewife is astir a saucer of acetic acid in her hand. In Rodot's Yvonne and Madeline new make their tumbled beauties, shattering with gold teeth chosens of pastry, their mouths yellowed with the pus of flan bread and faces of Paris men go by, their well-pleased pleasers, curled conquistadors. Noon slumbers. Kevin Egan rolls gunpowder cigarettes through fingers smeared with printer's ink, sipping his green fairy as Patrice's white. About us gobblers fork spiced beans down their gullets. Unto me setier. A jet of coffee steam from the burnished cauldron. She serves me at his beck. Il est Irlandais. Hollande? Non fromage. Du Irlandais, nu, Irlande, vous savez ah, oui. She thought you wanted a cheese Hollande your postprandial, do you know that word? Postprandial. There was a fellow I knew once in Barcelona, queer fellow, used to call it his postprandial. Well, slancha. Around the slab tables the tangle of wine breaths and grumbling gorges. His breath hangs over our sauce-stained plates, the green fairy's fang thrusting between his lips. Of Ireland, the Dalcassians, of hopes, conspiracies, of Arthur Griffith now, A.E., commander, good shepherd of men. To yoke me as his yokefellow, 
Our crimes are common cause. You're your father's son. I know the voice. His fustian shirt, sanguine flowered, trembles its Spanish tassels at his secrets. M. Dramon, famous journalist, Dramon, know what he called Queen Victoria? Old hag with the yellow teeth. Vie ogres with the dense Jean Maud gone, beautiful woman, La Patrie, M. Milvois, Felix Ferre, know how he died? Licentious men. The freakin, bought a tout fair, who rubs male nakedness in the bath at Uppsala. Moi fair, she said, to les messieurs not this monsieur, I said. Most licentious custom. Bath a most private thing. I wouldn't let my brother, not even my own brother, most lascivious thing. Green eyes, I see you. Fang, I feel. Lascivious people. The blue fuse burns deadly between hands and burns clear. Loose tobacco shreds catch fire, a flame and acrid smoke light our corner. Raw face bones under his peep of day boy's hat. How the head center got away, authentic version. Got up as a young bride, man, veil, orange blossoms, drove out the road to Malahide. Did, faith. Of lost leaders, the betrayed, wild escapes. Disguises, clutched at, gone, not here. Spurned lover. I was a strapping young gossoon at that time, I tell you. I'll show you my likeness one day. I was, faith. Lover, for her love he prowled with Colonel Richard Burke, tannist of his sept, under the walls of Clark and Well and, crouching, saw a flame of vengeance hurl them upward in the fog. Shattered glass and toppling masonry. In gay Paris he hides, Egan of Paris, unsought by any save by me. Making his day's stations, the dingy printing case, his three taverns, the Montmartre lair he sleeps short night in, Rue de la Goutte d'Or, Damascene with fly-blown faces of the gone. Loveless, landless, wifeless. She is quite nicey comfy without her outcast man, Madame in Rue Git Liqueur, Canary in two buck lodgers. Peachy cheeks, a zebra skirt, frisky as a young thing's. Spurned and undespairing. Tell Pat you saw me, won't you? I wanted to get poor Pat a job one time. Moan Fies, soldier of France. I taught him to sing the boys of Kilkenny are stout roaring blades know that old lay? I taught Patrice that. Old Kilkenny, St. Canice, Strongbow's castle on the Nore. Goes like this. Oh, oh he takes me, Napper Dandy, by the hand. Oh, oh the boys of Kilkenny. Weak wasting hand on mine. They have forgotten Kevin Egan, not he them. Remembering me, O oh Sion. He had come nearer the edge of the sea and wet sand slapped his boots. The new air greeted him, harping in wild nerves, wind of wild air of seeds of brightness. Here, I am not walking out to the Kish lightship, am I? He stood suddenly, his feet beginning to sink slowly in the quaking soil. Turn back. Turning, he scanned the shore south, his feet sinking again slowly in new sockets. The cold domed room of the tower waits. Through the barbacans the shafts of light are moving ever, slowly ever as my feet are sinking, creeping duskward over the dial floor. Blue dusk, nightfall, deep blue night. In the darkness of the dome they wait, their push back chairs, my obelisk valise, around a board of abandoned platters. Who to clear it? He has the key. I will not sleep there when this night comes. A shut door of a silent tower, entombing their blind bodies, the panther sahib and his pointer. Call, no answer. He lifted his feet up from the suck and turned back by the mole of boulders. Take all, keep all. My soul walks with me, form of forms. So in the moon's midwatches I pace the path above the rocks, in sable silvered, hearing Elsinore's tempting flood. The flood is following me. I can watch it flow past from here. Get back then by the pool bag road to the strand there. He climbed over the sedge and illy ore weeds and sat on a stool of rock, resting his ash plant in a grike. A bloated carcass of a dog lay lolled on bladder rack. Before him the gunwale of a boat, sunk in sand. Uncoche and Sibyl Louis Voyo called Gautier's prose. These heavy sands are language tide and wind have silted here. And these, the stone heaps of dead builders, a warn of weasel rats. Hide gold there. Try it. You have some. Sands and stones. Heavy of the past. Sir Lout's toys. Mind you don't get one bang on the ear. I'm the bloody well gigot rolls all them bloody well boulders, bones for my stepping stones. Fief off em. I smells de blood's odes and irids man. A point, live dog, grew into sight running across the sweep of sand. Lord, is he going to attack me? Respect his liberty. You will not be master of others or their slave. I have my stick. Sit tight. From farther away, walking shoreward across from the crested tide, figures, too. 
The two Maries. They have tucked it safe among the bulrushes. Peekaboo. I see you. No, the dog. He is running back to them. Who? Galleys of the Lachlans ran here to beach, in quest of prey, their blood-beaked prows riding low on a molten pewter surf. Dane Vikings, torques of tomahawks aglitter on their breasts when Malachi wore the collar of gold. A school of turlhide whales stranded in hot noon, spouting, hobbling in the shallows. Then from the starving cagework city a horde of jerkin dwarfs, my people, with flares knives, running, scaling, hacking and green blubbery whale meat. Famine, plague and slaughters. Their blood is in me, their lusts my waves. I moved among them on the frozen liffy, that I, a changeling, among the sputtering resin fires. I spoke to no one, none to me. The dog's bark ran towards him, stopped, ran back. Dog of my enemy. I just simply stood pale, silent, bait about. Terribilia meditans a primrose doublet, fortune's knave, smiled on my fear. For that are you pining, the bark of their applause? Pretenders, live their lives. The Bruce's brother, Thomas Fitzgerald, Silken Knight, Perkin Warbeck, York's false scion, in breeches of silk of white rose ivory, wonder of a day, and Lambert Simnel, with a tale of nans and sutlers, a scullion crowned. All king's sons. Paradise of pretenders then and now. He saved men from drowning and you shake at a cur's yelping. But the courtiers who mocked Guido in or San Michel were in their own house. House of. We don't want any of your medieval abstrusiosities. Would you do what he did? A boat would be near, a life buoy. Naturlish, put there for you. Would you or would you not? The man that was drowned nine days ago off Maiden's Rock. They are waiting for him now. The truth, spit it out. I would want to. I would try. I am not a strong swimmer. Water cold soft. When I put my face into it in the basin at Klongos. Can't see. Who's behind me? Out quickly, quickly. Do you see the tide flowing quickly in on all sides, sheeting the lows of sand quickly, shell cocoa colored? If I had land under my feet. I want his life still to be his, mine to be mine. A drowning man. His human eyes screamed to me out of horror of his death. I. With him together down. I could not save her. Waters, bitter death, lost. A woman and a man. I see her skirties. Pinned up, I bet. Their dog ambled about a bank of dwindling sand, trotting, sniffing on all sides. Looking for something lost in a past life. Suddenly he made off like a bounding hare, ears flung back, chasing the shadow of a low skimming gull. The man's shrieked whistle struck his limp ears. He turned, bounded back, came nearer, trotted on twinkling shanks. On a field tenny a buck, trippant, proper, unattired. At the lace fringe of the tide he halted with stiff forehoofs, seaward pointed ears. His snout lifted barked at the wave noise, herds of seamores. They serpented towards his feet, curling, unfurling many crests, every ninth, breaking, plashing, from far, from farther out, waves and waves. Cockle pickers. They waited a little way in the water and, stooping, soused their bags and, lifting them again, waited out. The dog yelped running to them, reared up and pawed them, dropping on all fours, again reared up at them with mute bearish fawning. Unheeded he kept by them as they came towards the drier sand, a rag of wolf's tongue red panning from his jaws. His speckled body ambled ahead of them and then loped off at a calf's gallop. The carcass lay on his path. He stopped, sniffed, stalked round it, brother, nosing closer, went round it, sniffling rapidly like a dog all over the dead dog's bedraggled fell. Dog skull, dog sniff, eyes on the ground, moves to one great goal. Ah, poor dog's body. Here lies poor dog's body's body. Tatters. Out of that, you mongrel. The cry brought him skulking back to his master and a blunt bootless kick sent him unscathed across a spit of sand, crouched in flight. He slunk back in a curve. Doesn't see me. Along by the edge of the mole he lolloped, dawdled, smelt a rock and from under a cocked hind leg pissed against it. He trotted forward and, lifting again his hind leg, pissed quick short at an unsmelt rock. The simple pleasures of the poor. His hind paws then scattered the sand then his forepaws dabbled and delved. Something he buried there, his grandmother. He rooted in the sand, dabbling, delving and stopped to listen to the air, scraped up the sand again with a fury of his claws, soon ceasing, a pard, a panther, got in spouse breach, vulturing the dead. After he woke me last night same dream or was it? Wait. Open hallway. Street of harlots. Remember. Harun al-Rashid. I'm almosting it. That man led me, 
spoke. I was not afraid. The melon he had he held against my face. Smiled, cream fruit smell. That was the rule, said. In. Come. Red carpet spread. You will see who. Shouldering their bags they trudged, the red Egyptians. His blued feet out of turned up trousers slapped the clammy sand, a dull brick muffler strangling his unshaven neck. With woman steps she followed, the ruffian and his strolling mort. Spoils slung at her back. Loose sand and shell grit crusted her bare feet. About her windraw face hair trailed. Behind her lord, his helpmate, Bing away to Romeville. When night hides her body's flaws calling under her brown shawl from an archway where dogs admired. Her fancy man is treating two royal Dublins in a Laughlin's of black pits. Bus her, wap in rogues rum lingo, four, oh, my dimber whopping dell. A chefine's whiteness under her rancid rags. Fumbly's lane that night, the tanyard smells. White thy fambles, red thy gone and thy corns dainty is. Couch a hogshead with me then. In the darkman's clip and kiss. Morose delectation Aquinas Tunbelly calls this, freight pork ospino on fallen Adam road and not rutted. Call away let him, thy corns dainty is language no whit worse than his. Monk words, merry beads jabber on their girdles, rogue words, tough nuggets patter in their pockets. Passing now. A side eye at my hamlet hat. If I were suddenly naked here as I sit? I am not. Across the sands of all the world, followed by the sun's flaming sword, to the west, trekking to evening lands. She trudges, schleps, trains, drags, trassens her load. A tide westering, moon drawn, in her wake. Tides, myriad islanded, within her, blood not mine, oin opa pantone, a win a dark sea. Behold the handmaid of the moon. In sleep the wet sign calls her hour, bids her rise. Bribed, childbed, bed of death, ghost candled. Omnis caro ad te veniet he comes, pale vampire, through storm his eyes, his bat sails bloodying the sea, mouth to her mouth's kiss. Here. Put a pin in that chap, will you? My tablets. Mouth to her kiss. No. Must be two of em. Glue em well. Mouth to her mouth's kiss. His lips lipped and mouth fleshless lips of air, mouth to her moon. Oom, a wooming tomb. His mouth molded issuing breath, unspeeched, ooia, roar of cataractic planets, globed, blazing, roaring way away 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 away. Paper. The banknotes, blast them. Old DC's letter. Here. Thanking you for the hospitality tear the blank end off. Turning his back to the sun he bent over far to a table of rock and scribbled words. That's twice I forgot to take slips from the library counter. His shadow lay over the rocks as he bent, ending. Why not endless till the farthest star? Darkly they are there behind this light, darkness shining in the brightness, delta of Cassiopeia, worlds. Me sits there with his auger's rod of ash, in borrowed sandals, by day beside a livid sea, unbeheld, in violet night walking beneath a rain of uncouth stars. I throw this ended shadow from me, manshape ineluctable, call it back. Endless, would it be mine, form of my form? Who watches me here? Whoever anywhere will read these written words. Signs on a white field. Somewhere to someone in your fluteous voice. The good bishop of Cloyne took the veil of the temple out of a shovel hat, veil of space with colored emblems hatched on its field. Hold hard. Colored on a flat, yes, that's right. Flat I see, then think distance, near, far, flat I see, east, back. Ah, see now. Falls back suddenly, frozen in stereoscope. Click does the trick. You find my words dark. Darkness is in our souls do you not think? Flutier. Our souls, shame wounded by our sins, cling to us yet more, a woman to her lover clinging, the more the more. She trusts me, her hand gentle, the long-lashed eyes. Now where the blue hell am I bringing her beyond the veil? Into the ineluctable modality of the ineluctable visuality. She, she, she. What she? The virgin at Hodges Fegus window on Monday looking in for one of the alphabet books you were going to write. Keen glance you gave her. Wrist through the braided jessie of her sunshade. She lives in Leeson Park with a grief in kickshaws, a lady of letters. Talk that to someone else, Stevie, a pickmup. Bet she wears those curse of God stays suspenders and yellow stockings, darned with lumpy wool. Talk about apple dumplings, Pitosto where are your wits? Touch me. Soft eyes. Soft 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 hand. I am lonely here. Oh, touch me soon, now. What is that word known to all men? I am quiet here alone. Sad too. Touch, touch me. 
he lay back at full stretch over the sharp rocks, cramming the scribbled note and pencil into a pocket, his hat tilted down on his eyes. That is Kevin Egan's movement I made, nodding for his nap, Sabbath sleep. Et vidit Deus. Et errant valde bona alo. Bonjour welcome as the flowers in May. Under its leaf he watched through peacock twittering lashes the southing sun. I am caught in this burning scene. Pan's hour, the faunal noon. Among gum-heavy serpent plants, milk oozing fruits, where on the tawny water's leaves lie wide. Pain is far. And no more turn aside and brood. His gaze brooded on his broad-toed boots, a buck's cast-offs, nebony and ander he counted the creases of rucked leather wherein another's foot had nested warm. The foot that beat the ground in tripudium, foot I dislove. But you were delighted when Esther Osvalt's shoe went on you, girl I knew in Paris. Tian, Kel Petty Pied. Staunch friend, a brother soul, wilds love that dare not speak its name. His arm, Cranley's arm. He now will leave me. And the blame? As I am. As I am. All or not at all. In long lassos from the cock lake the water flowed full, covering green goldenly lagoons of sand, rising, flowing. My ash plant will float away. I shall wait. No, they will pass on, passing, chafing against the low rocks, swirling, passing. Better get this job over quick. Listen, a forwarded wave speech, see Sioux, HRSS, recise, ooze. Vehement breath of waters amid sea snakes, rearing horses, rocks. In cups of rocks it slops, flop, slop, slap, bounded in barrels. And, spent, its speech ceases. It flows purling, widely flowing, floating foam pool, flower unfurling. Under the upswelling tide he saw the writhing weeds lift languidly and sway reluctant arms, hising up their petticoats, in whispering water swaying and upturning coy silver fronds. Day by day, night by night, lifted, flooded and let fall. Lord, they are weary, and, whispered too, they sigh. St. Ambrose heard it, sigh of leaves and waves, waiting, awaiting the fullness of their times, Diabus A.C. Noctibus and Uria's patience in Jemisset to no end gathered, vainly then released, forth flowing, wending back, loom of the moon. Weary too in sight of lovers, lascivious men, a naked woman shining in her courts, she draws a toil of waters. Five fathoms out there. Full fathom five thy father lies. At one, he said. Found drowned. High water at Dublin Bar. Driving before it a loose drift of rubble, fan shoals of fishes, silly shells. A corpse rising salt white from the undertow, bobbing a pace a pace a porpoise landward. There he is. Hook it quick. Pull. Sunk though he be beneath the watery floor. We have him. Easy now. Bag of corpse egg is sopping in foul brine. A quiver of minnows, fat of a spongy titbit, flash through the slits of his button trouser fly. God becomes man becomes fish becomes barnacle goose becomes featherbed mountain. Dead breaths I living breathe, tread dead dust, devour a urinous awful from all dead. Hauled stark over the gunwale he breathes upward the stench of his green grave, his leprous nose hole snoring to the sun. A sea change this, brown eye salt blue. Sea death, mildest of all deaths known to man. Old Father Ocean. Pre de Paris, beware of imitations. Just you give it a fair trial. We enjoyed ourselves immensely. Come. I thirst. Clouding over. No black clouds anywhere, are there? Thunderstorm. All bright he falls, proud lightning of the intellect, Lucifer, Deco, key Nessida Cossum no. My cockle hat and staff and his me sandal shoon. Where? To evening lands. Evening will find itself. He took the hilt of his ash plant, lunging with it softly, dallying still. Yes, evening will find itself in me, without me. All days make their end. By the way next when is it Tuesday will be the longest day. Of all the glad new year, mother, the rum tum tiddledy tum Lawn Tennyson, gentleman poet. Jaw for the old hag with the yellow teeth. And Monsieur Dramon, gentleman journalist. Jaw my teeth are very bad. Why, I wonder. Feel. That one is going too. Shells. Ought I go to a dentist, I wonder, with that money? That one. This. Toothless Kinch, the Superman. Why is that, I wonder, or does it mean something perhaps? My handkerchief. He threw it. I remember. Did I not take it up? His hand groped vainly in his pockets. No, I didn't. Better buy one. He laid the dry snot pick from his nostril on a ledge of rock, carefully. For the rest let look who will. Behind. Perhaps there is someone. 
he turned his face over a shoulder, rear regard on. Moving through the air-high spars of a three-master, her sails brailed up on the cross-trees, homing, upstream, silently moving, a silent ship.